I'm Eric Wielander, welcome back to my channel. So CES has come and gone, and we have a pretty good idea about what products are coming in 2024. And I'm gonna list eight ideas of ways I think are good to upgrade your smart home in 2024. And picking any of these should give you a nice quality of life improvement, while also hopefully not buying technology that's gonna be obsolete the day after you get it. And let me know in the comments below which of these ways are most interesting to you. And thanks to Opal and their tad camera for sponsoring this video. More on them in a minute. Now, first on the list is upgrading your TV area. Now, this has a few different options depending on your setup. The first is that if you're in the market for a new television, consider getting one that supports Apple Home or HomeKit. And you gotta be careful because there's also a supports Apple AirPlay badge that is totally separate. Now, when you have a TV that supports Apple Home, you can scan the HomeKit code on the screen add it just like any other accessory in your smart home and then control the power as well as the TV input right from Apple Home and you can add that to any kind of automations or scenes or setups you have for your TV, which can make it way easier for you and your family to get the right setting depending on whether they're watching the big game or a movie. Now, if you wanna upgrade the audio for your TV, Apple last year released the HomePod 2 and a definite upgrade from the built-in speakers in your TV is adding a stereo pair of HomePod 2s combined with an Apple TV to run the audio from your TV. I've been testing this more and more and I think Apple's recent additions of things like enhancing the dialogue with the Apple TV audio settings makes this a really nice setup. Now, it's not gonna be a surround home theater kind of style audio, but it's still gonna give you way better audio than you'd get from smaller speakers like the ones in your television. Now, if you're into something more fancy, like let's say a Sonos soundbar, I'd recommend holding off because rumor is sometime in maybe the next like 12 to 14 months, Sonos will release a new version of their Arc soundbar and I think that's worth waiting for. Now, maybe you're happy with your TV and audio setups, but one other thing you might not have thought about is to add some accent lighting under pieces of furniture, like let's say an entertainment center or things that then can just add a little bit of brightness when you need it to get up to go to the kitchen to get a snack or something. And we have a lot of great matter supported LED light strips out there that you can use for this. Now, my current pick in this category would be the Nanoleaf Essentials light strip that supports matter. And then you have a light that you can change to different colors and brightness levels right in your movie time scene or automate with a motion sensor when the other lights are off. And also stay tuned in this category in 2024 because Govi will be releasing a new, what they call spotless LED light strip that has diffusion built in. You won't be able to see the individual LED lights on the strip, just the glowing light. And if LED light strips aren't really your thing, GE Sync is coming out with some under cabinet lighting that supports matter that I'll be checking out later this year as well. Now, for letting yourself or your friends in to watch the big game or movie, a home key smart lock is a great improvement. This is where you can just tap your iPhone or Apple Watch that's part of your Apple Home, and then it will unlock the door for you. And I'm gonna talk about my current favorite home key smart lock in this category, as well as some others to look out for. But first, thanks to Opal and their Tadpole camera for sponsoring this video. I've heard a lot of great things about the Tadpole since its launch, so I was very excited to try it out when Opal wanted to sponsor a video. You've probably picked out clothes you like to look professional at the office, but when you're working remote or joining a video call, most of us don't pay enough attention to our video and audio quality. Improving this not only looks professional, but it helps other people in the meeting hear you clearly and see your facial expressions and gestures. Opal's new Tadpole can give you exceptional video quality for your laptop or iPad video conferencing in an Apple-like design. The camera has a Sony 48 megapixel sensor which is binned to a sharp 1080p image with a six element lens in front of it. But the camera is tiny and can clip on the top of your laptop or tablet and connects with a braided USB-C cable. After plugging it in, it just works without any software. Opal also has a free app you can download if you wanna tweak your camera settings. My favorite feature is that when you're using the Tadpole's built-in directional mic, the USB-C connector has a tap to mute button. Just tap on the top of the connector to mute and unmute for calls. 
When you're muted, the connector and the camera both show a red light. When I'm in a meeting, it's easy for the software mute button to get buried by other tabs or windows on my Mac. Now I have a quick control right by my keyboard to unmute and chime in when needed. But I'm also certain I'm muted when I see that red dot. Well, I love YouTube. My primary job is leading a remote software development team. After using an Opal Tadpole in plenty of remote meetings at home, it's also earned a spot in my travel bag to improve my video quality in the poor lighting of offices and hotel rooms. To learn more and get an Opal Tadpole for yourself, check out the link in the description and use my promo code ERIC with a C to get 15% off your order. Thanks again to Opal for sponsoring this video. So my current pick for home key locks is the Slage Encode Plus, and it's actually become much more available than it used to be. There was a long time where if you tried to get it, you'd had to wait a while or just go through all these listings of it being out of stock. Now, one of the reasons I like the Slage Encode Plus is because it supports home key. It also has a keypad on there which you can control right inside the home app to give other guests and family members specific codes they can use to unlock the front door. And it also seems to handle situations well where you can't use, let's say, the Slade supplied strike plate, or you have some kind of funky situation where your door and your door frame don't always line up just perfectly because a lot of deadbolt smart locks want to just go straight into the deadbolt. And if you have a door that maybe is just a little bit off, then that's gonna have problems. And the Slage & Co Plus seems to handle that better in my experience than other locks I've tried. Now, keep that in mind. If you're thinking about upgrading to a smart lock on your door, you might wanna just check the door and the door frame and make sure everything lines up nicely the same way when you open and close the door. Otherwise, adjusting or fixing your door or your door frame might be the first thing you need to do. And another one I'll be checking out is the Acara U300. Now, it looks like this has all the hardware to support home key and it has an NFC reader and things, but Acara hasn't officially announced home key support for this lock. Now, the cool thing about this lock is that it works with the handle. It's not for the deadbolt. So this could be a nice way to add a smart lock, maybe with home key to something like the door to your garage or your office or another place where a lock makes sense, but you don't have a deadbolt. Number three on my list is adding buttons to control Apple Home scenes. So I've talked about in the past how important Apple Home scenes are as sort of a building block for doing automation and other controls in your home. And then you can tie those scenes you create to buttons. And then when you add a button into the Apple Home app, you have an option usually for a single press, double press, or a long press on that button. So you basically get three controls in one. And you can do some more advanced stuff where you tie that to some kind of an automation. So depending on what time of day or other conditions are, when you press that button, it'll do different things. Now, there are a variety of different good buttons in this category. I've recently started playing with 2O's smart button, and it's cool because it has magnets on it, so you can stick it places that are magnetic, but you can also put it on a wall mount. And the 2O button just by itself works with matter over thread, which is fantastic. Now, I also like the flick buttons. Well, they require a hub and have announced matter support hopefully coming later this year, their buttons are really small, so you can easily stick them a lot of different places. So for example, back to the TV scenario earlier, we have these little C tables around our couch where we watch TV and I've put buttons underneath of those C tables where then as we're ready for more, let's say of a dim light movie scene, I can just press that button and it'll turn off all the main lights and then we're ready to watch our movie. And then when it's done, I can press that same button again and it'll turn on sort of this dim lighting so we're not overwhelmed by the brightness of the lights after this movie and then can get up and see everything and go on with our lives. And so sometimes having buttons like this where you know based on the type of content you're going to watch, whether you want the lights off or not, then you just hitting a button is easier than trying to say, well, if I'm watching TV and it's a Wednesday after 7 p.m., then just turn off the lights because that might annoy people in your home more than just you just have to press the button when you as a human know it's the right time. Number four on my list is getting a robot vacuum. 
Now, as we look into 2024, there are two new models at least that are built to the Matter spec, meaning that they should work with Matter, which means that someday they should work inside Apple Home. So a little bit of a leap of promises there, but I think both of these look like they'll be good vacuums regardless. And that's the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra and the Ecovax D-Bot X2 combo. Now, even if you don't really care too much about matter support, which I think is kind of a nice to have feature, there are so many great robot vacuums out there at so many different price points that if you've never had one, it's so nice to not have to worry about cleaning your floors in a particular area of your home. And if you have one, consider getting an additional robot vacuum, maybe for another floor. I have one down here that cleans just my office and it's really nice to just always have my office vacuumed. I basically never have to vacuum vacuum my office myself because the robot takes care of it. Number five on my list is improving your outdoor smart home. Now, Lutron has my favorite outdoor smart plug if you use their lights, which is in your home. It's very expensive for a smart plug, but it works really well. And so I'd recommend checking out their outdoor smart plug if you're considering that. There are also some more affordable options out there for outdoor smart plugs, but we've also had a lot of options for outdoor lighting. Nanoleaf announced some this year at CES. Now, something I have tried is the Sonos Move 2. That came out late last year, and it's a really nice outdoor speaker that then you can use also inside, and it not only works with Sonos system, but it supports Apple's AirPlay too. So you could use it with your iPhone or other Apple devices to play audio that way, and even combine it in those cases with home pods you might have, but it could be a great way to get into the Sonos system if you don't have that already. And yes, it even works as a Bluetooth speaker if that's something you're into, especially for maybe having a friend play some music from their phone. Now, it's definitely bigger than a lot of Bluetooth speakers, but that's because it also sounds good. And so you just grab the built-in handle, carry it out to a backyard or back deck, and you're gonna have a great listening setup. And with the new version, you get better touch controls on top, you get better battery life. HomeKit Secure Video is Apple's way of storing recorded clips from your security cameras right in iCloud. So you don't need to pay for an additional video subscription if you already pay for iCloud Plus with additional storage. And these recorded clips don't count against your storage allotments. Now, there are a bunch of pros and cons to HomeKit Secure Video that I've talked about in previous videos, but the right now there are so many good options of HomeKit Secure Video cameras for inside your home. And I would look at something like the TP-Link Topo C125 that I recently reviewed on this channel. Number seven on the list is adding sensors for automation. Now, I think Acara has some recent updates here that are really good to consider. The first is the Acara P2 door and window sensor. Now this sensor works works with matter over threads. So you don't even need to be into the Acara system to use this sensor. And this will tell you when a door, let's say a closet door or really any door in your home is opened or closed. And you can adjust the smart lighting around there with automation in Apple Home. And the other added benefit here that we got late last year is the ability to see logs that are private and secure inside of Apple Home about when these door sensors are opened and closed. So it's a nice peace of mind way to check if a door has been opened or closed over the past few days. And then also I find these door sensors handy as we're leaving the home and thinking, oh, did we leave that door open for the cats to get around the house or or is it closed and you can just check in the home app? Yes, the door's open. Now, if you're already a little bit more advanced in smart home setups, I would recommend checking out the Acara FP2. This is a very futuristic millimeter wave sensor. It's sort of like the next generation of way to detect people in rooms compared to what you've seen in a lot of typical motion sensors for years and years, which is passive infrared. And the millimeter wave is way more precise and you can do all kinds of cool automation with this and Acara keeps adding more and more features with software updates to this sensor. Now, you don't even need an Acara hub to do this. It'll connect straight to your network and then go right into Apple Home. And then Acara's app also has a lot of ways you can customize and dial in the settings for this sensor. 
And even if you have some of those sensors in particular rooms in your home, consider where it might be a good place to add them over the next year. Number eight on my list is to monitor your energy. Now, Eve is a great European company that makes smart home tech for Apple and now everything with matter. And they have the Eve Energy Smart Plug as well as what's coming out very soon, the Eve Energy Outlet. And both of these allow you to monitor your energy use from those plugs and you can even make smart home automations based on that so when let's say some kind of a appliance connected to it starts using less energy maybe that means that it's off and you could change a color of light somewhere else in your home it can also just be good for troubleshooting like making sure that a smart TV or something else is not taking up too much power. You can cut power to things to save energy. So if you're concerned about using less energy, whether that's to save money or save the environment or both, Eve has a lot of great products in this sort of Eve energy category with their smart plug and smart outlets that are worth checking out. Thanks again so much to Opal and their Tadpole camera for supporting my channel by sponsoring this video. You can find links to that down in the description below as well as I'd love to hear in the comments which of these categories are things that you're most interested in doing for your smart home in 2024. And I'll also leave links to some of the videos I've done on these topics down in the description below. So check that out. I think it's gonna be a really exciting year for smart home tech. Now, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.